uh, Melanie Salemi. I, I honestly think that performance on Friday, those three runs, 58, 358 off the trailer, 357 in the second round of qualifying, and under the lights, Friday night, Galat Motorsports Park, one of the most incredible eighth-mile drag racing facilities on the planet. I'm going to say the most incredible eighth-mile drag racing facility on the planet. Clicks off a 356, crushes the record, crushes the field. I think that was probably the most impressive, one, if not the most impressive single-day performance in the history of the PDRA. Damn close. Like, you, what, do you, that's what do you think about incredible. the parity with those combinations in Man Pro Boost? I think we're getting, so there's an interesting thing. I spoke with John Salemi about this a little bit because I, you have to wonder like, where did the hell did this come from? Not that they're not capable of running really well. I mean, she, Melanie's won a lot of races, won some big races, won the shakedown in Norwalk a couple of years back, won the snowbird nationals. She's had a tremendous amount of success, right? Or the, she did she win the U S street nationals regardless. She's had a ton, a ton of success. So it's no surprise to see that continue, but the performance and the, the gap they put on everybody. I mean, I wrote in that story on the website, Stevie Fast Jackson's the one who always likes to crush everybody and step on their throat and all that. And he's the one that's good for a soundbite. But Melanie Salemi and John Salemi, her husband, who leads the, the charge on that program, calling the shots on the side piece Camaro, they, they stepped on everyone's throat in Pro Boost this past weekend. That was a performance of a lifetime. And you, you only hope that they're able to, to continue that. But I talked to John and basically last year, they kind of bounced around with, uh, their, with their program. They went from the screw blown Hemi deal with a, with a, with a three speed transmission to the roots blown Hemi deal with a Liberty. And that's where they're at right now. They've got a roots blown Liberty or roots blown Hemi with a five speed Liberty. And that combination is fast. From what I understand, they were making like innumerable runs on the hub dyno over the off season. I heard the number 45, 50 runs on a hub dyno over the off season and clearly paying dividends. We've talked right here on that, sh on this show, how I think that we may look back at some point in the future. I don't know that we really understand how significant the hub dyno has been to the I sport was, of drag I was racing. About to say that. Like, I think that will be a landmark. We it's will from something that's <laughs> like a, Luxury you know, to yeah, a luxury or yeah, it's something that was questionable whether it was needed or not to where they it's have like, to have it. It's a difference maker for these combinations now. I think it starts everything off. You're so much further along. You're not trying to get it to idle. You're not a lot of the things that you're fighting with a new combination are at the racetrack historically. Ironing out all those kinks and getting all those bugs out while you're in a shop with tools everywhere, air conditioning blowing, like you're not worried about it raining. You didn't have to fly a bunch of crew guys in. It's You really can't say enough about the opportunity that a hub dyno provides race teams. And again, I do think there will be a point in time when we're looking back and going, wow, do you guys remember when Joe Aplosky, to the best of my knowledge, brought out and like kind of made standard the hub dyno? I mean, he was like the first guy that I'm aware of that was out here running pro mods and running really big power cars on chassis dinos. I mean, don't you remember that video that went around of Mark Woodruff, his black Corvette, the one that's yellow now on the, the chassis oh, dyno yeah. making 4,000 yeah. horsepower or whatever. And people were, <clears throat> people hadn't seen that. Right. And then a video came out of Bob Rams pro nitrous or NHRA pro mod Camaro on that hub dyno. Then the next thing, you know, fuel tech's got one modern in modern racing's got one. Everybody's got one. And it's a clearly a difference maker. And I look at, that off-season testing, putting in putting in the time uh, when it's not convenient, clearly making the difference for John Salemi and company. And I'm anxious to see what the next couple of events look like for those guys. I mean, you, you can't help but figure Melanie's going to come in with a full head of steam, right? Wanting to right um, whatever wrong that exists in the elimination rounds there from the East Coast Nationals going out on a whole shot. Not like a crazy bad whole shot or anything. Nothing for her to be hanging her head about. Uh, especially when you, it's it's a classic example of when you become the favorite, it, it changes things. No matter no matter what, when you become the favorite, it changes things. And I'm anxious to see how this story unfolds, how they're going to handle the pressure of being one of the teams that have a target on their back, one of the teams that race from the front. We saw.